Hi there, I'm back with another interactive card for Create a Smile. This time I've used a new mechanism called 4-bar linkage to make four of the sea creatures move. As far as I know it hasn't been used in card making before. I started by stamping and coloring the animals from the glowing seaside and gull gang sets. I needed to change the direction of the squid, so I partially stamped just the outline and here I've positioned the stamp so that the eye and mouth won't be upside down. I'm just placing a strip of paper so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm using a memento marker to just color the eye and that cute little smile. I was lucky and it turned out perfectly on the first try. Now I'm going to show you a little bit of my coloring. I'm no expert and I usually start with the darkest color. For the eye that's the R20, then I used E01 and finally E000. Next I chose R29 for the darkest part of the body. In an underwater scene that's usually the belly and some areas like behind the eye. My next darkest color is R27 and I'm just overlapping a little bit to create a smooth transition. Then I used a little bit of R24 and finally R22 for the highlights. I also added some dots with the darkest color to give a little bit of texture to the skin and darken the shadowy parts some more. Off camera I added a few white lines with a sharpie marker and of course some glossy accents to the eye. Here I'm adding the last touches to the water panel, a piece of Bristol smooth paper that I inked with four different tones of distress ink tumbled glass, broken china, peacock feathers and stormy sky. I didn't want to get my fingers dirty so I just used a pair of latex gloves to ink my panel. For the mechanism I cut 8 strips of heavyweight cardstock in measurements that you can see on your screen, layering 2 and 2 together with liquid glue. Then I rounded the corners and punched holes so that I could link them together forming a rectangle. You can totally adapt this mechanism to the measurements of your panel and make the strips shorter or longer. Let's check if the tabs move correctly before we continue. Yep, this looks good. So we can see what else is needed in addition to the mechanism and water panel. A card base of course and the same sized panel. I have inked the top part in a blue ink that matches the water. I'm not sure if it's a strip of sky or just more water, so I left it simple, but you could add waves or even clouds. I previously punched two holes in it so that you can attach the mechanism. I'm so sorry, but I forgot to measure the placement of them, so you'll just have to eyeball it. I would say that the right edge of the vertical strip is about one inch from the right edge of the panel. The important thing though is that you leave enough room to attach some foam adhesive around the mechanism. Also keep in mind that the vertical strips will be tilted to the right in the initial position of the mechanism. This way our critters can have a wider range of motion. I mean like this. Let's move on to the next step. I always use my Fiskars 1 inch circle punch for this, but since it's too large I'm using a 3 quarters of an inch one instead. Now I can reattach the brad and move on to the next step. I started with the seagull, which I temporarily attached with a strip of tape, and now I'm making sure that it can be seen the whole way, before I glue it to the upper horizontal bar of the mechanism. I used Ranger's Matte Multi-Medium for this, but you can use any glue or even double-sided tape. I then decided to round the edges of the tabs a little bit more, which is perfectly fine as long as we don't overdo it 
and cut too closely to the bread. I just used my scissors to snip off a couple of slivers and that's it. Okay, let's continue working with the horizontal movement and find the perfect placement for the squid. If you've been subscribing to my channel for a while, you've probably figured out that I used a small magnet to attach it to the pull tab. These magnetic discs by Basel are my favorites, since they don't add a lot of bulk to my interactive cards. You just peel off the backing and attach one of them to the pull tab and the other one to the back of the moving element. I sometimes make a prototype of the card beforehand and sometimes I just record the process with my camera straight away and end up having to correct things as I move along. This time when I placed the jellyfish on top of the rotating brad to the left I noticed that I had to move the squid a little bit more to the right. Luckily you can carefully peel off the magnetic disc and reattach it. There, a lot better. To make the jellyfish and the anglerfish rotate, we need to cut some holes in our water panel. You just press down with your finger on top of the rotating brads and use a pencil to mark the two spots. Then we can use a small circle die or a craft knife to cut the holes that need to be a little bit larger than the brad but smaller than the moving element. I decided that it would be a good idea to punch a semicircle in the front of the card base so that it would be easier to grab the pull strip. Next, I attached the panel with the mechanism to the card base with some double-sided tape using my advanced tape glider, which I absolutely adore. I stayed clear of the brads so that they could rotate freely. It was now time to apply some foam tape around the mechanism. I grabbed a pencil to sketch out the risk-free areas while moving the pull tab. I used two layers of 3M foam tape to make sure that the water panel wouldn't touch my 4-bar linkage. I find it a little bit easier to attach the front panel if I make my card stand. I could finally adhere all of my sea creatures. I used thick round foam dots for the two holes, avoiding the brads. If you play with the card a lot, the magnet tends to make the cardstock a bit shiny. You can hardly tell, but I think that if you glue a tiny paper disc to it, the polishing effect is lessened. This time my magnet also had a little defect, so I did it just in case. You can see that it isn't totally smooth. Also, I kinda like it, but if we want to avoid the unpredictable behavior of the jellyfish, it would be better to use two magnets or a thin rectangular magnetic snap if they exist. I'll have to investigate. Here I've already added a vellum banner with the sentiment and a small fish, and I'm adhering an orange enamel arrow to the pull tab. I like these self-adhesive clear enamel dots, but you could also make your own with glossy accents. Even when adding these, I had to make sure that they wouldn't interrupt the movement of the critters. And here are some pictures of the final card. I added some tiny red fish by Mama Elephant and covered them with glossy accents. Head on over to my blog for the measurements and more info about this card. And please join us for this giving thanks challenge at Create a Smile. As you can see, it's a very versatile theme that you can interpret however you want. Share, like and subscribe if you feel like it and have a great day. Bye bye. Ciao.